I think we can all agree that creating an abstract masterpiece takes some time. But what if we create 100 of them at the same time? That's what we're going to try to do this week on Mixed Media Masters. Hello, makers, and welcome to the studio. Uh, if this is your first time here, it's good to have you. Welcome. Uh, if you see anything along the way that you like, please hit that like button. And if you want to hear from us on a regular basis because we're doing some really fun art projects, then be sure to subscribe. Now, this week, we want to talk about how we can take advantage of some tools that we have. And I'll link to a video that we showed, showed previously on this channel that talks about different paper punches. And one of the things I want to be able to do this week is I want to create basically uh, a montage, if you will. I want to create a collection of small abstract art pieces that we can put all together in one place. Now, I've created projects like this in the past, and there's, they always come with a certain amount of acclaim, and people really, really like them. For example, here's one I created and sold last year that is, uh, that is a favorite of mine. Here's one that currently is uh, in an exhibition uh, in, uh, in New York, and uh, some great things. And I'm going to try to recreate that with you today and give you some insights into the creative process and also to allow you to flex your your creative wings. I want you to be able to come in here with a certain amount of confidence that if I can do this, you can do it as well. So on, on this one hour masterpiece, which if we're being honest, is going to take a few hours because these just take forever. If we're going to create a hundred of them, especially, but let me talk about what we're doing. Now I'm working with uh, different scraps of paper that I might have. Let me grab something. I'll, I'll grab kind of a foundational red color here and uh, I'm going to have some orange here. Let me grab my a pair of my happy craft scissors here. Uh, and by the way, my there's a story behind my craft scissors. I'll put this link down in the description below if you want to learn more about how you can find a, a lovely pair of craft scissors like these. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of color to work with. This is a beautiful thing about working with scraps is that we have all these little colors that can work together. And so I'm going to come in here and let me just grab a triangle, something like that, that I can put in here. And uh, I'm going to grab a glue stick as one does. Um, and uh, I may need a gluing sheet, but we'll get to that. I'm just going to grab and get some glue on the back of this. And I'm going to drop that right here in this area on this red. And uh, you know what? I have a little bit of blue in here as well. And let me just kind of create a squiggly line, something like this. I know it probably your your head is going, what, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? And let me get some glue on this guy as well. There we are. And I'll get them dropped in uh, and I'll run it across my triangle like that. And you're saying, you know, Spider, that doesn't look like any kind of abstract art that I've ever seen. And you're probably right. But what we're going to do now is we're going to frame it. And, you know, think about how movie directors, the kind of thing where, you, you know, you kind of look at the world through here, like, what is it going to look like on the big screen? And that's something we can do when we're working with paper punches. Now, we've talked about paper punches in a previous video. Again, I'll put a link down in the bottom if you want to check on that. It's also going to be the end card. But uh, I'm using this round punch. Now, this is a three-quarter inch, I believe. Maybe it might be one inch. But this is just going to allow me to go in and say, okay, if I were to look at this thing that I've created, whatever the heck it is, and say, if I were to grab a section of this and isolate it from the rest of this background, what might that look like? So if I take my paper punch and slide it over my paper, for example, I can kind of come in and say, hey, if I punch this out, will that be my artwork? And I can do just that. And now I've created, in essence, one of my abstract art pieces. And what I want to do here is I want to create about 100 of them. And I'm going to do a row using a circular piece. And I'm going to also do the same thing using a similar square paper punch. So I'm going to do a row circular, a row square, circle, square, circle, square, and run this down. Let's make, uh, let's make ourselves the, uh, the square one while we're in here. I'll use the blue as a foundation this time, and maybe we'll drop some uh, red onto it. And again, sometimes you don't have to be, uh, you know, playing too far ahead. You can kind of just get a sense of what's going to happen. If I glue that to there, that like there, and uh, I don't know, do I want to use this blue? I use this other blue down here, and maybe I'm just going to cut out a kind of a, a blobby circular thing. And let's get that a little bit smaller. And again, what I do with this is up to me, but I'm going to create a 
kind of a, a potato shape. How about that? And if I drop this in here like this, say, for example, we'll get some glue on that. And put that right on there. There we go. Now, if I come in with my square punch, it's a similar process. Let me just trim this edge off so I have access. And if I come in here, take the guard off so you can see better what's going on. I can come in here like this and I can say, hey, that is going to be my abstract art piece. So you see how we're doing this? There's no right answer. And uh, that's, that's our motto here on Mixed Media Masters. What we do with this is what we do with this. But what's really fun here is as we start creating these individual elements and working them all together, they all become part of a final piece of artwork. So a big part of what we're doing this uh, with this project is just creating these individual elements in whatever way we want. And by the way, are you restricted to colored papers to make your things? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You want to use comic books, you want to use old magazines, you want to use, you know, newspapers, whatever's going to make you happy, create your content using that. And we'll line things up here. Now, um, I want you to be able to spend some time. This is the kind of project where you put on your favorite audio book or your podcast and you listen away for a few hours while you're making stuff happen. And I'm going to do that at this end while I make some more artwork. And then we'll catch up as we start getting the pace down. Talk to you then. As you see, it takes a while to get through this process. I've created uh, 20 of our little art pieces here and uh, about 80 to go. And I find, you know, on average, depending on how quickly you can do it and, and how uh, the ideas spring to mind, I can take two to three minutes per, or uh, in this case, you know, if you're making 10, about a half an hour each, uh, each time we make 10. So an hour for what we've accomplished so far is not unreasonable. And again, there's no, there's, you know, we're not, we're not running a race here. The opportunity, of course, is to create something that's going to be interesting visually when we're done. And it takes as long as it takes some time. You know, the, the, the concept behind the one-hour masterpiece is that we can talk about it in an hour. But um, it's going to take you longer to do certain things. So all I want you to be able to do is just keep going with it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn the camera off for a little bit, give myself uh, and the equipment a bit of a rest. And when we get back, I'll show you what I've accomplished here. And we'll pick it up from there. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, we're almost there. We are getting there. Now, uh, by the way, this, uh, as you may have noticed, takes an awful long time. I would say that, uh, you know, when you're creating 100 individual abstract art pieces, um, it takes about four to five hours when you uh, really sit down and do this. As a matter of fact, it's actually uh, a few days later from uh, when I started this because I had other things to, to take care of. But uh, we're almost there. I'm going to create a few more of these here. 
And my process is, you know, again, I'm just looking for something that's visually interesting. And, and I have a, an assortment of uh, little scraps of paper in front of me by this point and an opportunity to take these little scraps of paper and do something meaningful with them. You know, oftentimes we would look at paper like this and say, you know, that's just a small piece of paper. What value is it? But in this case, it's a little burst of color. And since we're creating really small artwork anyway, it kind of works out for what we're doing. So oftentimes it's just a matter of saying, all right, let's get some color in there. What, what color might go well with that? Maybe this yellow will, for example. And uh, sometimes, quite literally, I'm just looking around at scraps that are left on my table and thinking how I can do something creatively with just them. So let me, uh, let me create a, another circular blobby shape here with this one. And look at that. You can do a lot of, a lot of bean shapes with uh, these little scraps of paper which are kind of cool. And then I'll put this on top of the yellow. And uh, you know, I think this needs one more and I'm gonna grab a, a little piece of black since I have one. And let's just get a line again. Let's cut that and you know, if I lay the black on top, it really just pops the whole thing. So sometimes, you know, working with a good contrasting color like black and white could really make a huge difference after you've laid down a bunch of other colors just to kind of, just to kind of bring it to fruition. All right, so we have our, our basic shape and then it's just a matter of making sure that it frames up nicely what we're doing. And you know, one of the questions you ask yourself is do I want, you know, the ends to show up? Am I focused on the middle? Does it really matter? I think in this case, I'm gonna focus more on the color blobs. I don't need the end of that black and I'm gonna make a decision and uh, punch it out. And there we are. We have uh, a, another of our fine pieces of artwork to, uh, to deal with. What else, uh, one more. One more. You know what? I'm going to go. I'm trying not to repeat any of the colors that I have in here. Let's go with this, uh, uh, our salmon color, or whatever we'll call that. It's a coral, I guess, kind of a hot coral. And uh, again, I'm going to use a little bit of black on this because black pops so beautifully. And uh, maybe I'll just do something with some smaller pieces. So there we go. We'll create a couple of these little black lines. Now we can drop those in, almost like sprinkles. But uh, of course, being able to kind of contrast those with, with other things can make a huge difference. And this yellow actually shows up really well against the coral and it will also pop up nicely against the black. So let me just trim this guy. And you know, I don't want you to spend too much time overthinking the process. That is not the objective here. The objective is really just to say, you know, if I were to pull together uh, a 100 small ideas for abstract art, what might that look like? All right, and I'm going to come in here, and again, let me just, uh, two, do, two different ways, by the way, that we can approach the gluing process, especially when we have really small shapes. One is that we can take the shape and we can rub it on our glue stick, and I find oftentimes this is the easy, easiest way to control it. I also find that at the end of the day, I have lots of glue on my finger, so you have to get up every so often and wash things off. The other approach is to just come in here and just put glue down on the surface that you want to approach, and then just pick the pieces up and kind of drop them into place, almost like confetti here. And we'll get that in there, get this pink piece there, and we'll drop that in there. And this glue will dry clear. Once, uh, once it dries, that purple goes away. Sometimes I have noticed that if you put a lot of glue on something after it's dry, there might be a slight sheen on it. So uh, your choice to do that. I'm gonna do one more, you know, just kind of make it, make it interesting. Let's put a little green in this uh, before our glue totally sets. And I'll make it a little shorter. There we go. And we'll put it in there like that. All right, now again, the goal here is to create 100 things that are somewhat different from one another. We're using a lot of the same color palette, obviously. So the look and feel of all these colors together is really what is going to be the, the output here, the culmination of this. And let's just get this last piece in place. Let's get this last piece punched out. So I'm gonna roll up here. Again, just kind of figure out, eyeball it. Say that looks good to me. Alrighty, at long last, let me cap my glue so I don't dry that guy out. And uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Now I've been able to create so far uh, 50 circular pieces of artwork here. And everything now is currently in rows of 10. So we have a row of circles, we have a row of squares, row of circles, squares, and so on and so forth down the line here. 
Now, is that what I want to do? Well, that's what I set out to do. When I when I envisioned this project initially, I'm like, hey, a row of this and a row of this and a row of this. Now, could I come in here and say, you know what? Wouldn't it be interesting if we put square pieces all around the edges and all the circles went inside? It sure would. It's going to change our count, to be honest, because we have a lot more squares left over and not enough circles to do that. If I said, hey, maybe I start off with some squares in the middle, then circles and squares... You get my point. We can do an awful lot with these individual pieces. I think I'm going to stick with the original design here, which is really just to create these individual rows. And it's obviously very loosey-goosey right now. Uh, what I need to think about is a couple things. First of all, I want to come in here and I want to construct a grid that will make the gluing up process a lot easier. Because to be honest, if I were to try to eyeball these and you know drop them in straight lines, it's probably not gonna go so well. There's gonna be something that's gonna be off and it's gonna bother you every time you look at this forever and ever. So I'm gonna come in here and think about how I wanna partition these things off and how much space is needed. And uh, then I'm also gonna have to really kind of sort out what, uh, what pieces should go where. To do that, you know, I'm going to just make things easier for myself, and I'm going to make two piles. I'm going to put my circle, circle pieces over here, and uh, I'll draw from these later as I need it. I'm going to put my square pieces over on this side, and I'm going to do that with everything and get everything cleared off of this piece of paper, since I'm going to need to uh, do, some, do some figuring. By the way, when you're creating these pieces, it's it's not never a bad idea to have a couple of extras, you know, an extra circle, extra extra square shape, because there will be times. Whoops, oh, gosh, while I'm talking, I'm not sorting into the right piles. That's that's just kind of a fundamental flaw in uh, in in my understanding of the assignment here. There we go. Let's make sure we sort things where they need to go. Uh, as I was saying, if you have a couple of extras, there will be times and you'll kind of get to putting something together and, and a piece just won't, it won't grab you. It won't grab you. Your, your brain's going to go, yeah, that's not really, that's not really a good candidate for what we're doing. Now, oftentimes I'll do that while I'm making things and I'll just toss things that started off as a bold experiment and just kind of fell apart along the way. But uh, I think we're in pretty good shape for this. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay. So we have our circles. We have our squares. And uh, we have our work surface here. Let me just get the random detritus off of here. And what this is going to come down to now is kind of deciding how I want the pieces to fit in here. Um, let's start by getting a, a deeper sense of how big each one of these squares is. And if I come in here and I measure it, each one of these is just a speck over an inch uh, on each side for the square ones. And, and we're going to presume that the round ones are kind of within the same range. Now, again... When you buy the, the punches, they are the size they are. But it's just about an inch or a little bit over. We'll give it a little bit of a buffer because we also want to have a little bit of white space, obviously, between each one of these to really help it stand out amongst the crowd, so to speak. So I need to think about the possibility that within my 18 by 24 inch sheet of paper, I want to have roughly 10 inches, right? 10 inches plus, maybe 11, maybe even 12, uh, and maybe do the same thing across. So let's just say for the sake of argument, if we add white space here, and again, I can do a little bit of figuring by just kind of dropping a few pieces here. If I say this is kind of the space spacing that I want between these pieces, that's not going to be three inches, that's going to be three and a half. So with each one of these, we're doing, uh, say, an inch, and uh, we could probably say an inch and... We could do an inch and a quarter. We could make it an inch and a quarter and make it really work for what we're doing. So if an inch and a quarter for each one of these means that we need 10 inches and a quarter, 10 inches and a quarter. And so what that's going to allow us to figure out is, first of all, if we take 10 inch and a quarter, we're going to add up to, let's do the math real fast. That's going to be uh, 12 and a half inches, 12 and a half inches. So if we say, all right, we understand that it's going to be 12 and a half inches on a side. I can now grab my big omnigrid ruler and I can start to figure out uh, how much distance do we have from the side to the side? So if we want to make sure that we have a final amount of 12 and a half inches, that means that we are going to be working with five and a half inches. Let's make sure I have that right. 13. Yeah. So five and a half inches. So that means that roughly when we're dividing things up to get five and a half inches, we're going to put in... Uh, three and three quarter inches as 
our boundaries. All right, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to grab a pencil. And let's come in here, and uh, I'm going to just create a vertical line. Uh, two and three quarter. Two and three quarter is what I'm looking for here. Two, three quarter, and two and three quarter again. Some back of the envelope math. All right, so that's going to be almost five and a half. That's going to work out fine for what we need. So I'm going to uh, get a line over here. That'll be my vertical line. Let's do the same thing over here on the right-hand side. Again, we're looking for two and three-quarter inches. And uh, I have to tell you, um, you know, the more I spend kind of measuring things either here or in my wood shop, uh, the whole concept of, of, of millimeters and centimeters just starts to make a whole lot more sense. Uh, because, you know, trying to do this math uh, fractional stuff in your head, it's not crazy easy. Let's try to do the same thing on the vertical. And this might actually be a little bit easier uh, because one of the things that allows us to do is to get a sense of, you know, how far do we want to come down. Now, when I generally grid things out, I like to have more white space at the bottom of my piece of art than at the top. That's just my preference. And by the way, while I'm in here, just uh, let's just take care of business. I don't need this rag edge on the paper, so I'm going to get rid of that first. And that gives me a clean place to uh, start my... Uh, my measurement from there we go that's gonna make things easier and so now if I'm coming down from the top I can say you know what I really want to do here I want to start this gosh I could even start it like five inches down I can create some good white space here at the top and uh, make sure I'm lined up the way I want to be looks pretty good and let's get a line across and then if I were to measure down, say, 12 and a half inches, it's going to give me a sense of where my bottom line is going to be. So if I come on in here, 12, and I'm going to say 12 and a half. Let's do the same thing over here on the right-hand side, just so we have something that's fairly straight. Uh, okay, and now I can come and just connect the dots. Sometimes just make sure I'm lined up on other things so that everything looks good. Looks great. Looks great. All right. So there we are. So now we have our center of the piece of art. All I really need to do now is go through here and chunk it down. I need to measure an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter uh, across. Make my vertical lines. I'll do the same thing for the horizontal lines. We'll do this. Uh, we'll do this fast forward because you know you don't need that kind of excitement in your life. Back with you in a moment. Okay, so now it's just a matter of taking uh, our shapes and starting to position them on our piece of paper. And once again, there is no absolute right answer here. What you are going to find is that there will be certain designs and colors that you may not want to put next to one another because they're too similar, like two green pieces or two blue pieces or whatever. And so creating kind of a, an array of different colors, almost a just keep it polychromatic, but move things around. And also things that may have, you know, similar things, like I don't want to put uh, stripes next to stripes necessarily if I can avoid it. And uh, we'll see how we do <laughs> with the pieces that we have. But again, what I'm trying to do here is really just create something that's going to be visually interesting. And, you know, no one's going to sit down and look at each one of these individual pieces in the future, probably. You know, and it, it is almost like going to an art gallery. And that's kind of the, the, the thought I've had in the back of my mind on what to call this piece. Is it really is a gallery experience in a, in a lot of ways. But if I can come in here, how about the, that piece there? Good. That's nice. And over here on the end, da, 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 da. I don't know. No right answer. Let me put that one there. That pops nicely. All right. As you can see, the grid is going to help us to make sure that we glue these things up properly. Now, I'm not gluing anything down until I lay the shapes down because it's going to be almost guaranteed like, hey, let's swap this one for this one. It will do that. Once we have things laid out pretty well, 
then we can start the gluing process. So let me take a few minutes to kind of lay things out the way I think they're going to work best for this piece, and then we'll get to the gluing. Several months later. Okay. Now, again, it's, uh, it feels good to have everything kind of in as, uh, as a grid here. I think it's going to work out pretty nicely for what I want to do. And one of the things, I don't want you to overthink this part. You know, is there a possibility that there's a better place for any one of these pieces? Absolutely. Again, I'm trying not to put colors that are too similar to one another because it kind of creates kind of a, a blob. And I'm also thinking about the orientation of these individual pieces of art. I mean, is that upside down? Maybe I need to turn that one sideways. You know, for example, this one, does it look better if I do it like that? You know, I think it does. So some things to consider with regard to how things lay out here is going to be super key. Now, how do we want to kind of put these things in? Well, to be honest, when I was measuring things out, I got a slight difference over here on the right-hand side that I did on the left-hand side. So my margins are off by about a quarter of an inch, which is not the end of the world. But again, if your entire art is kind of shifted over, it's going to look a little, look a little awkward. One of the things I want to do to counter that is when I paste up, I'm going to use the lines on the left-hand side as a line to really kind of align to, if you will. So when I glue things up, I want to glue down on that left-hand line. And that's going to just shift things over back another eighth of an inch. And it's going to make it less noticeable in the future because everything will be lined up where it needs to be. Now, the process here is going to be pretty basic. I have, uh, I'm going to move this up a little bit. I have a gluing sheet here in front of me, which is just a piece of, uh, of printer paper. It's just a piece of copier paper that I like to use here. And it just allows me to glue things up and not get lots of glue on my main piece of, of art here. So with these, pretty easy. Get some glue on the back, drop them into place. And I just want to take time and focus on making sure that things are lined up properly, at least so we have consistent lines and columns and rows. Because if we don't do that, like I said, something that's going to stick out like a sore thumb, we don't want that to be the case in what we're doing. So that is uh, that is going to be the next step of this project. Again, I will I will spare you the excitement of watching uh, another human being glue down 100 different sheets of uh, pieces of paper. But when we get back to the end, we'll see how this has turned out. We'll get rid of our lines, and uh, we'll talk about the next steps. finally down to the last piece. Again, uh, you know, th there's nothing about this project that goes quickly. Uh, it is a one hour masterpiece. Uh, but the truth of the reality is, is that it takes a while for pieces to be made and uh, stuck down. But hopefully you'll agree that the results are worth it. There's some pretty cool things in here. Let me, uh, by the way, I'm just using a, uh, <clears throat> a, a roller that's used for printmaking. It's used for distributing ink and putting it on, on printing plates and things like that. That's what I like to use with pieces when I'm gluing them down. It just gives a nice firm, it's basically a roller, a rolling pin to make sure these things will sit down here and get nice and tight. Anyway, there we are. That's what our final is looking like. 
And once we get all the lines out of there, it's going to look even better. I'm going to give this just a, a couple seconds here to, uh, to do some drying, uh, just to make sure that I don't have any pieces on the top that if I erase next to them, I'm going to disrupt them. And then uh, I'm going to jump in, get rid of these lines, and uh, we'll see what we have. Bottom level. Got a, got a few marks in here. But for the most part, I am not unhappy with how this turned out. And it's a good thing because, you know, as you've already noticed, it's a bit of an investment in time to be able to create a piece like this. So this is a complicated piece. It, it takes a while to do. Um, and I find with things like this, um, if I'm being totally honest, to sit down and, and make 100 pieces of, you know, of, of individual art uh, in one sitting is a hard thing to do. I usually break this into a few different seatings and listen to a podcast or a book of some sort while I'm working on this just to help pass the time because it can be not tedious, but it, it can be meticulous and, and take a fair amount of time and, and attention to get there. But uh, this one's good. I'm going to give this a name and I'm going to put this up in on the website. This will be put in the gallery. Um, I think I'm going to call it something like a, an afternoon at the gallery. How about that? But uh, I'll figure that out. You know, sometimes the uh, the name will pop in your head like, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want. But pleased with how this has turned out. And uh, if you are interested in purchasing this piece, uh, please look for it in the gallery. I'll put some special pricing and a discount code for you. Special for uh, for my, my, my channel watchers. That's uh, how we do this. But anyway, thank you so much for your time and attention in doing this. I hope you get something really good out of what we have here today. And if you like what you saw today, please remember, we do this all the time. Once a week, I'll drop a different project. If you want to know what's going on, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And we'll let you know every time a new video drops. All right, this is all I have for you today. Thanks so much for dropping by. And I'll see you next time.